Let's rock, baby. You ever just had a video game series that you couldn't get into, no matter how cool it looked or how many people said it was good? But when you finally got into it, you were immediately hooked. For me, that series was Devil May Cry. This party's getting crazy. Let's rock. Rarely has a video game series grabbed me like Devil May Cry has. It took me a long time to actually get invested into this franchise, but when I did, oh baby was I hooked. So much so that I ended up beating all five of the mainline games over the summer. Now I'm going to talk about them. Welcome to the first part of my Devil May Cry retrospective. <laughs> I started out the series on the 3rd and 5th game, so going into DMC1, I was worried that playing those games first might make my experience playing this game not as fun. But that turned out not to be the case, and like the title says, Devil May Cry 1 still holds up, and introduced everything that would make Devil May Cry a fantastic series, like the combat. Keep in mind, I'm playing the Xbox 360 version of the HD collection, so certain buttons and controls may be different from the version you play. With that out of the way, let's finally talk about the combat. Combat in this game is very simple to learn, but hard to master. Like all good combat systems, it's so simple that combat only uses three buttons. The Y button is for melee attacks, the X button for gun attacks, and the RB button in order to perform certain attacks using your melee weapons. I'm going to go over the guns in detail first because they're more simple to explain. Guns in this game are basically used for chip damage, and not much else. You would think that since in the cutscenes the guns seem to be super overpowered, that they would be the same in the game? Well, you would be dead wrong. Like I said, they're basically used for chip damage, and not much else. Except in certain cases, like the scissor enemies being weak to your guns. But other than that, guns are not your main source of damage. That would be melee weapons. You get a couple of melee weapons to use. Like Force Edge, which is the starting sword, Alistair, a better version of Force Edge, and Ifrit, which is basically gauntlets that allow you to punch and kick enemies with the power of fire. You can make different combos by pressing the Y button at different times and positioning the left thumbstick as well as pressing the RB button at the same time. But before you can actually perform the different combos and techniques, you gotta buy the different combos from the store that you can access before each mission, and that you can find at certain spots during the level. Each weapon has a list of upgrades exclusive to that weapon. Out of all the weapons though, I would recommend upgrading Alistair more than the other weapons. This mainly comes down to the fact that, one, Alistair has the double jump upgrade. Also, Ifrit doesn't really even need upgrades, I find that it has enough variance and stopping power to be fine on its own. Actually, I forgot to mention one other weapon you can get near the end of the game, and that would be the Devil Sword Sparta. It's just another version of Force Edge, and a worse one at that. Why is that? Because it gets rid of Devil Trigger. Devil Trigger is basically your super mode, or as I prefer to describe it, it's the win button. After the meter fills up, you press the LB button and, like I said, you pretty much win the game at that point. In Devil Trigger, you do more damage with both your guns and melee attacks, your health starts regenerating, and you run at the speed of an Olympic athlete. You'll need those upgrades, as this game ain't easy. Or, to be more specific, the bosses aren't easy. Yeah, so I'm gonna be real. The regular enemies in this game aren't all that difficult. They can be taken out pretty easily by just being smart with how you move and attack. The bosses are a different story. 
The bosses in this game are rather difficult with difficult to dodge attacks and rather large health bars. Phantom is the first boss, and he is a huge step in difficulty. He first appears in Mission 3, and you fight him one more time in a later mission. The main source of difficulty comes from the fact that he can only be damaged by hitting him in the face, meaning the rest of him is completely invincible. Overall though, he's a fun boss to fight. Next is Griffin, and he is not that fun to fight. He stays away from most of the boss, so you need to mainly use your guns. I forgot to mention this in the gun section of the video, but you can't just hold the X button, you have to tap the X button for your guns to fire. So, this boss will kill your thumbs, and you fight him three times. Yeah. Next is Nello Angelo, who might be my favorite boss in the game. It's not the hardest fight ever, and can easily be beat with Devil Trigger, but I enjoy the fights with him. You fight him three times, and each time the arena gets smaller, making it harder to dodge his attacks. I enjoy bosses like this. Bosses where it feels like you and the enemy are on the same playing field, and while some may disagree, I feel like Nello Angelo is the best boss in the game. I can't say the same about Nightmare. Nightmare is the second worst boss in the game. He's a giant blob thing that really is no fun at all. You're supposed to hit the glowing things on the wall so it'll show the wink point. Oh yeah, Nightmare also forces you to fight a boss you've already beaten to do some decent starting damage. It sucks. In fact, I have a strategy to beat this guy. Just use items. Yeah, there are items in this game. You can buy them at the shop where you buy combos and attacks for your melee weapons. There are items for recovering health feeling your Devil Trigger meter faster, and Holy Water for causing huge damage to your enemies. Normally, people don't like to use these since, you know, it's kind of lame, but in this game, there are two exceptions where using items is, in my case, totally accepted. The first case being Nightmare. All you need to do to beat Nightmare is jump on him to initiate a redo fight with the boss you've already defeated. This should be easy as the boss goes down much quicker than the first time you fought him. After you do that, you'll be returned to the boss arena, then just hit the glowing thing, and as soon as the weak spot shows up, spam holy water, then boom, it's over. By the way, you fight this thing three times, and that strategy I just mentioned works all three fights. By the way, you remember how I said there was a second exception to using items being okay in this game? That second exception goes to Mundus, the final boss and my least favorite boss in the game. This mainly comes down to the first phase of the fight, which is for some reason a shoot 'em up section. All you need to do for this fight is do a little bit of damage, and then just use the Devil Star to refill your Devil Trigger, which summons a monster that does big damage, and that's it. There's a second phase to this fight, but it's not all that special. Hit the balls to fill up your Devil Trigger, then do big damage. Riveting. You do have one more fight with Mundus in Mission 23, but it's so short that it's not even worth mentioning. Just a heads up, we're going to be discussing spoilers, so skip to this section here if you will want to avoid those. Now let's talk about the story. The story in this game is interesting because, well, there's not much to it. Trish comes into Dante's shop, which is called Devil May Cry, Huh, I see what you did there. Trish comes in and attacks him, and this happens. Sword. Haha, <laughs> time to go to work, guys. So yeah, you can already tell what kind of game you're getting into. Trish explains that the demon Mundus is returning, and that you need to stop him. There's also the fact that Mundus killed Dante's mom, and that Dante's dad fought against Mundus. And that's about it. No, seriously, that's it. There aren't that many cutscenes in the game, so the story never really goes beyond that. I mean, it's later revealed in the game that Trish was secretly working for the bad guy Mundus? But then again, when she first met you, she immediately attacked you. So it's not that surprising. 
Actually, I got a question for any Devil May Cry fan that's watching this video. Why does Trish look like Dante's mom? I mean, I guess there's some sort of plot relevance to it, but at the same time, it's still weird considering the slight romantic undertones between the two main characters in this game. Anyways, back to the video. I want to bring up one more thing before moving on to my final thoughts, and that's the voice acting. The voice acting is something truly magnificent. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light! Okay, I'll be real, it's cheesy. Like, super cheesy. But that's what makes it so much fun for me. Block off, Featherface! Or you can stick around and find out the hard way! Again, there's not a whole lot to the story in the game, and what little there is ain't great. Dante! Don't come any closer, you devil! You may look like my mother, but you're nowhere close to her! You have no soul. You have the face, but you'll never have her fire! But the voice acting makes the cutscene so much more fun to watch. Alright, so what don't I like about the game? First off, I don't know who thought this was a good idea, but there are some platforming sections in this game, and they suck! It mainly comes down to the camera. If you don't know, this game was originally supposed to be Resident Evil 4, so I'm convinced that this automatic camera change every time you enter a new area is from that development cycle. It especially sucks because in Mission 17, when you're trying to get onto this platform, the camera angle changes while you are trying to jump to the platform! Why?! Besides that, there are also some underwater levels, where you need to go into a first person view and use a needle gun. These levels aren't terrible, but still, they don't belong in this game. I don't know why developers like to insert different gameplay types into an action game, but stuck. The worst example of inserting different gameplay types is the first phase of the Mundus fight. It's such a huge turn from what the game has been up to this point, and plus, it's not fun at all. If you enjoy this fight, more power to you. Speaking of the bosses, I wish they were more consistent in terms of their quality. Out of all the bosses, I only really enjoyed two of them. The rest were boring, annoying, and just downright frustrating. Overall though, the combat is still really solid. It's super fun to fight demons using the various melee weapons and guns. This combat has aged so well that from the third game onward, the combat is basically just a super enhanced version of the first game's combat. This game also introduced some of Dante's trademark cockiness, which would become more prevalent in the later games. Now let's talk about the soundtrack. I haven't mentioned it yet, but there are some good tracks in the game. Like so. Again, I've already mentioned how the story isn't that great, but it makes a good starting point for the rest of the series. The story introduces many of the things that would become mainstays in the Devil May Cry franchise. I've already mentioned Dante's personality, which is in some of the cutscenes, but there's also Trish, who would return in later games in the series. I could probably say more about the game, but then I'd just be rambling at that point. Overall, while some things get on my nerves, Devil May Cry is a fun game, and you should go out and play it. Not to mention, it's super short. I beat the game in less than 10 hours, so it won't overstay its welcome. Again, go out and play it. You won't regret it. Speaking of regret, join me next time as I take a look at Devil May Cry 2. The worst one.